What's up, prospects? It's no doubt. Back at you with another Absolver video. Hey, two weeks. Two weeks. 14 days. Oh, the hype train. The struggle is real. If you're with me, prospects, you're just like me. I'm sucking up any amount of data, any amount of information, any guide, any strategies, any tips, any tricks I can gather. So you know I gotta hit y'all with another one. So I was lurking around on Reddit and I saw this awesome guide by Grey Maiden who, if you don't follow the streams, he's one of the QA testers who currently has access to the game before it's released to the public. And he's been so gracious as to bestow upon us a training manual that goes over the intricacies the battle strategies and the mental mind games that he's accrued in his time with Absolver. And I want to share that with you guys because I saw JM in the training session today spar with the architect of the manual himself. So I thought it'd be valuable to not only see the author put his mantra into action, but also since JM is sparring against him, you'll be able to see what it looks like from a defensive point of view. You'll be able to see what works, what doesn't work, and you'll begin to learn to recognize different levels of attack by their visual cues. Also, I'm gonna to read to you guys the first two sections of this training manual. So sit back, relax, I'm about to get to work. Let's roll. So we'll refer to this manual as Gray's Training Manual. And once again, a big thanks to Gray Maiden for providing this training manual. Thank you so much for providing your expertise on some strategies and some wisdom that you've accrued playing this game. It will definitely serve us well so that when we get into the world, we'll be better prepared and ultimately, hopefully, we'll have a better game experience at launch. So, on to Gray's training manual. Section one, applying effective pressure. In Absolver, much of the game is spent dealing or executing pressure and block strings. To inflict damage, an attacking player must usually bait a defensive option whether that's a fast jab or a defensive style action such as a parry or a dodge or an attack with a defensive property or run the defending player's stamina out while they're blocking. Because of this emphasis on opening players up to punish them, it is essential to learn how to pressure effectively so that you can convert as much of your stamina into damage as much as possible every time you're on the offense and then get out safely. You must also learn when to abandon pressure and conserve stamina so as to ensure that the opponent does not catch you and punish your poor stamina management after you run out of stamina during your attack. Improving pressure is a little complicated and it involves both deck building as well as developing your own individual mental game. I will cover the deck building component of pressure later on in this guide, so let's discuss how to improve your mental game. Any form of pressure must ultimately begin with a credible threat that requires your opponent to take some sort of action. This threat could be a very fast attack that is very difficult to react to in order to make your opponent block. Uh, it could be a slow ground break attack to draw a dodge or a parry, or it could be some sort of absorbing or dodging attack that defeats your opponent's preferred method or option. No matter what it is, However, your opponent must be scared of it. They must be afraid of it. To make them afraid of it, you must show them that they will lose every time if they do not defend against it, often by hitting them with it. How to do this will be discussed in the spacing and initiation section. So once your opponent is scared of an option, you must learn to recognize that fear. Watch. Is your opponent defending against your threat? Did they start dodging your jab? Did they start parrying your guard break or using a different initiation to get around your avoiding attack? Well, that's good. Now you must begin your offense. Once your opponent is defending, you must take appropriate action to punish their defense. Whether that be hitting a dodging opponent with a horizontal attack so you can catch them or Maybe fainting into your second combo attack because you see them reacting to your combinations or your routine. Then, when the opponent stops defending, you must resume your original threat. This simple loop of adaptation is the core to any effective offense, and the strongest players make the fastest observations and the quickest adjustments to keep their opponent reacting inappropriately 
for the maximum amount of time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is applying effective pressure. That kind of was a perfect timing uh, in regards to how I'm constructing this video. Um, right now, it's 2-2 as you can see in this PvP. So we're gonna get the peek into the mind of Grey Maiden, who once again was the creator of this guide, as to how he's going to close out this 1v1. So I'm gonna let the, the, the architect do the explaining. Actions speak louder than words in this case. Oh baby, oh boy, the teacher's cooking. What's in the pot? Let me get a sample, bro. All right, so as you can see, Grey Maiden was able to inflict his will a little bit better than JM was, um, obviously, because JM uh, was defeated. Uh, so let's get into the second section he has provided so far in his training manual, and that is what we'll refer to as section two reading and escaping pressure. So, having gone over the previous section, it may be tempting to think that the key to a strong defense against pressure would be to simply develop one's mental game to be able to adapt as fast as the opponent tries to counter your defense. That would be a mistake. A powerful defense is far more than simply adapting quickly to the opponents. It is also important to reduce the amount of time that you need to play the attacker's guessing game to begin with. There are two main ways to do this. The first is to find what I call a bottleneck in the opponent's deck. As Oliver has only two attack buttons and no directional attacks or special inputs to change what those buttons do. This means that in most cases, your opponent will only have two attacks available to them at any time based on their stance or whichever move they use last. This means that there are decent odds that there is at least one attack in the opponent's deck after which both attacks can be defended against with the same action. Meaning that unless the opponent specifically calls out your defense and feints, you will be able to escape. For instance, after Necronomancer's sidekick, his options are to perform a jumped light kick a fast linear attack that avoids lows, or a front kick, which is a slow linear guard break attack. Thus, I can safely side dodge after his side kick, and unless he predicts the dodge and delays his attack, I will escape pressure. If he delays, well, then I can jab him and then begin my own pressure assault. Second is to react to an attack. Both blocking and attacking require stamina, and slower, heavier attacks drain more stamina when blocked than faster, lighter attacks. Some light attacks are, in fact, stamina negative when blocked. This means that in order to break your guard, your opponent will likely have to use slower, heavier attacks that you can, with practice, react to and defend against, even if you have not predicted them. Thus, it is feasible to sit and block while waiting for an attack that you can react to and then defend against it with a combat style ability or dodge. However, this is a lot harder than it sounds and requires a lot of practice and a clear mind. Ultimately, confirming an attack with your eyes and reacting appropriately in time is simply a matter of practice and discipline. Techniques for finding bottlenecks in the opponent's deck will be covered in deck memory. So for now, let's just talk about training reactions. Normally, difficulty in training defensive reactions is in finding an opponent to throw random attacks at so that you can practice defending against them. Thankfully, Absolver's open world is full of NPCs with sets of scripted attacks that they use at random allowing you to practice without demanding several hours of another person's time. Now the downside is that you have to train this skill on specific moves and not every move is good on an NPC to practice with. Still, the training method is as follows. Find an NPC with the move, then try and defend against the first attack in the chain appropriately. 
you want to avoid practicing against moves later in the chain because the early moves tell you it's coming, so it's mentally different. For instance, if I want to practice against leg breaker and front kick, two moves that I have trouble with, I could fight the cult NPCs in the hunting ground who use leg breaker, front kick, and ankle stomp and practice dodging leg breaker and front kick on reaction while blocking any ankle stance. When training, take care to try and maintain spacing as if it was a real human opponent. Think of each case where you block a leg breaker or front kick as a fail in each case where you block an ankle stamp as a success. If you can find a training partner who is up to practicing their pressure, you can focus your attack by having practice fights where you just try and get out of the pressure without attacking and see how long you can last. That is the end of section two, which is so lovingly labeled reading and escaping pressure. <laughs> All right, guys, so I know that was a lot to sit through. Uh, so that concludes the lecture portion of our training session today, Prospects. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to leave you with this gem of a PvP we have, uh, where not only you'll get to see a really cool board that they have designed for PvP, but you'll also get to see uh, what it's like to go up against a drunken fist style oh, right. character. On, uh... This is a gentleman who has a lot of experience with this style, so you'll be able to see a well-oiled, um, real-life person who has a drunken fist style unlocked and what it looks like on, from a defensive standpoint. So, um, if you haven't already, please join the community over on Reddit. Uh, that is the main Absolver Reddit. I created a, a, a subreddit called Ranked Absolver, and like I said, that's more geared towards when the developers released the ranked leaderboards uh, into the game so uh, that's going to be a great place to look for players look for teammates look for mentors also look for sparring partners and just general uh, forums to trade ideas strategies and things that you have learned in the board that others may want to learn or that you just may simply want to share so I'm gonna let uh, you guys enjoy the rest of this video is no doubt stay woke prospects
first one. Sword! Windows, can you just fuck the fuck off right now? I'm 
never leave without finishing my drink. 